Welcome to the Lose Your Cravings podcast, taking a mindful approach to reducing your cravings once and for all with your host, Kisa Amaro, Certified Integrative Health Coach. And welcome back, my friends. I'm Kisa Amaro, and I help women reduce their cravings and manage their emotional eating without deprivation or complicated meal plans so they can show up fully in their life and their career. And hey, if you are looking for a supportive community that will help you lose your cravings and manage your emotional eating, then I invite you to join the Nourished Mind Body community and connect with others on a journey to transform your relationship with food. Together, we are tackling cravings, weight fluctuations, and food stress, and we help you embrace a balance and food freedom. And I'm really excited to support you in letting go of restrictive diets and finding sustainable wellness. And so if you are interested, you could head on down to the show notes and click the link in the show notes to join us today and or just to find out more info about it. Um, I can't wait to welcome you and to join you into the community. Okay, my friends, on to our topic for this episode. And I just want to say, before I started recording, I almost put my, I have a shirt that says a lot going on at the moment almost put it on for this podcast because there's like this beeping noise in the background. I'm hoping you can't hear it. It's somewhere out in the neighborhood. I don't know where it's coming from. We have the washing machine going and we have my dog chewing on a bone and it's really hot. That's why I did not put the shirt on um, because it is just really hot and I did not want another layer of clothes on. Um, So that's what's going on today. I don't know what you're going to be able to hear if you hear a beeping, if you hear um, a washing machine, if you hear a bone hitting the cement floor because we have concrete floors. So um, with that being said, on to our topic for this episode. Um, I want to introduce um, a cultural belief system or ideology that I'm starting to become aware of and dive deeper into that can really be detrimental to our mindset and keep us focusing on the things that don't serve us or support us physically, mentally, or emotionally. And that is the topic of healthism. You may have heard this term, or maybe it's new to you. Either way, I hope that um, through this episode, you understand what healthism is, how it negatively affects society as a whole, and how you can keep your focus on all the things that you've been learning through this podcast or through working with me. So, um, you have, with working with me, with listening to my episode, you have started to become aware of diet culture and its impact on our self-beliefs, our feelings, and our behaviors. We know how detrimental it can be to our relationship with food and our body image and even our self-worth. And within that culture, in the healthism culture, the size of your body and health have become one in the same. So if you are of a social acceptable size, you are quote unquote healthy. And if you are not of a socially acceptable size, you are quote unquote unhealthy. Diet and health culture determine your health by your size, right? So it's, it's looking at, okay, if you fit into this norm, you are healthy. If you don't, you are unhealthy. So people believe that by simply looking at a person and their size, body composition, that we can determine their health, okay? So where in reality, right, that, that is that, uh, that belief system, where in reality, your weight does not determine your health. You and I both know people who fit into the societal standards of weight Right? We know a person out there, they fit into the societal standards of weight, but they are not healthy. They may have a poor diet, they may drink a lot or smoke a lot or just sit on the couch all day or are sedentary, right? And so they're not necessarily healthy, right? And we know people who don't fit into the societal standards of weight, who are doing all the things, they eat a balanced diet, they're moving their body, they're working out, they have good sleep, Um, and healthy blood markers, right? So 
What exactly is healthism? I know I can hear the bone. I don't know if you can. I've tried to move my dog, but she just comes. She like gravitates towards me, which is fine. I get it. I don't mind, but it's when she has a bone. Okay, anyways. Healthism is a term that was coined by Robert Crawford, who defines healthism as, quote, the preoccupation with personal health as a primary, often the primary, focus of definition of the definition and achievement of well-being, a goal which is to be obtained primarily through the modification of lifestyles, end quote. Okay, so let's, let's kind of like deconstruct this and talk about this. So healthism often emphasizes personal responsibility for one's health suggesting that individuals have significant control over their well-being through lifestyle choices such as diet, exercise, and avoidance of risky behaviors. And healthism places people's health as solely in their control. Like they are 100% completely control of their health. And it forgets to take into consideration their access right? Access to things like fresh fruit and vegetables, access to clean drinking water, access to grocery stores, access to a kitchen to cook food, access to quality medical care, or access to a gym or a safe neighborhood to walk around. For example, rather than making sure everyone has access to fresh fruits and veggies, healthism shames people for not eating enough fruit and veggies. It neglects to consider whether a person can afford to eat these foods and whether they have access to a market or store that, sh that sells fresh produce. So I want to talk about a few things um, that you can start to notice about healthism, how to kind of like define it and look at it and notice it and how it impacts our society and you as a person, right? How you are within this societal um, ideology. So number one, healthism is individualistic, right? Healthism does not take into consideration social determinants of health. So some of these social determinants are economic stability, education and access to quality education healthcare access and quality of healthcare, um, neighborhood and built environment, and social and community contexts. So these determinants can show how health is not solely in our hands, but there are other factors that play into our health and well-being. So for example, um, they show how our health is not just impacted by how often we go to the gym and work out, but how safe and walkable our neighborhood is. I actually have a client and the last time we spoke, she was talking about how her neighborhood does not feel safe to walk in. So how is she supposed to get out and go for a walk when she doesn't feel safe, right? She doesn't feel safe going out and walking by herself. Um, and the, the social determinants of health, they also point out how not having access to affordable and quality health care impacts our health more than eating a salad every day, right? Just the fact that there's, there's, you know, if you don't have access to quality health care, that can be more detrimental than just eating a salad every day, right? So you can work out all you want and eat a balanced diet and get good amounts of sleep, but when your water is contaminated with lead or jet fuel, how are you supposed to be healthy? And these are things that actually have happened. People were drinking contaminated water, not knowing they were provided this water by their city. And they didn't know and they were getting sick, right? They may eat all the good foods, they may work out, but they are not healthy because of the water they're drinking. Okay. So we all have social privileges and lack thereof based on our individual circumstances, circumstances like where we live, having transportation to get to an exercise class or a store, having access to grocery stores that sell fresh produce, and access to quality health care. When I was teaching, um, a lot of the kids, 
didn't have access to a grocery store and not just the kids, but the, the families, right? There weren't grocery stores within walkable distances of where they lived. And it was, it was an impoverished community. And so how were they supposed to be eating more vegetables, eating your greens when they don't have access to it? when their access are convenience stores, right? Um, so health is not 100% individual, but there are larger societal um, circumstances, the societal system at play, right? So I want you to know that and just understand that and try and start to see that within your community, within um, maybe your state even, right? Okay. So next, healthism makes health a moral obligation. Healthism overlooks the systemic factors that we just talked about that are beyond our control and turns health into a moral obligation that everyone is expected to meet. Everyone should be healthy. Everyone should be at 20% or less body fat. Everybody should be working out three times a week. Everybody should be eating vegetables and lean proteins and whatever. Um, so this creates a situation where being unhealthy is equated with being less worthy, which we all know is BS, right? Everyone de deserves respect regardless of their health status. And health is, healthism preaches that if you are thin and in shape, you are a good person and deserving of respect, wealth, happiness, and success. If you are overweight, you are not a good person. You should be shamed of yourself, right? And something is wrong with you and you don't deserve respect, weight, um, health, happiness, <laughs> or success. So we are all worthy no matter what our health situation might be. We also have the right to make decisions about our own bodies no matter what we look like. However, the reality of our healthcare system means that many people can't truly exercise this autonomy because of larger systemic issues. For example, can someone really have body autonomy if they're exposed to environmental pollutants that are left unaddressed because of where they live, right? They might live in a low-income community. No, right? Okay, so next, healthism places health on outside appearances. Right? It's all about what we look like. It's all about our weight, our body composition, what we're eating. Okay, my dog's now chewing on a basket. <laughs> um, okay, so healthism places health on outside appearances. In this belief system of healthism, you can look at someone and tell whether or not they're healthy. That's what healthism believes, right? You and I know, once again, this is total BS, and that it is such a negative and destructive belief system to ingrain in people, especially young people, right? We were all ingrained, indoctrinated into diet culture, right? And look how that turned out. This is just another round of diet culture is what I truly believe. So. So we can feel pressure to look a certain way and weigh a certain weight in the name of health, okay? If it's because of health, then I better do it, right? I need to be healthy, right? How many times have you gone to the doctor and they're like, you need to lose weight, you're not within the BMI, and yeah, that's BS, that's total BS. And we're like, well, we, you know, like we don't know that, but we're like, yeah, I have to lose weight. My doctor told me I need to lose weight because I'm not within the BMI even though my blood pressure is fine, my cholesterol is fine, um, my blood sugar levels are fine, I'm exercising, I'm, you know, I'm eating greens, whatever, right? Um, so we have this pressure to look a certain way, and if we don't, we want to do something in the name of health, right? And this is everything that we have been working to get away from. Healthism frequently associates health with thinness and physical fitness. Media and wellness industries often perpetuate this ideal, suggesting that a healthy body must look a certain way. 
this can contribute to dissatisfaction and drive people to start extreme or harmful eating practices and workout regimens in the pursuit of health, right? In the pursuit of health. I'm doing it because of health. So people who don't fit the ideal body type, they may be judged or stigmatized, which can lead to feelings of shame or worthlessness which may drive people to engage in extreme diets or extreme exercise programs as a way to conform to those societal expectations or cope with that negative self-image. Healthism places a continuous emphasis on self-improvement. How can we get better? How can we achieve the perfect, right? The perfect body, which can lead to an obsessive focus on weight and appearance. Now, this pressure can trigger disordered eating and over-exercising um, or disordered exercising such as, you know, the restrictive dieting, binge eating or purging, over-exercising. So overall, healthism's focus on individual responsibility for health combined with its promotion of ideal body types and fitness standards can contribute to body image issues and disordered eating by promoting unrealistic expectations and creating that stigma around certain body types and health conditions, okay? We can't look at somebody and know if they are healthy or not. That's just, it's, it's not that way, right? It doesn't work that way. So we need to stop doing that, okay? So what do we do with this information? Why am I sharing all this with you? Now, I want you to start to notice where you see healthism. Where do you see it in your everyday life? On social media, in movies, in podcasts, in media, in social groups, at gyms, in yoga studios, in schools. Where do you see healthism showing up in your life? Your first step is to become aware of healthism and how it shows up in your life, right? We need to be aware of something before we can change it. Not necessarily that we are going to change healthism as a society, but that we can change our view on healthism. Maybe we have some of these views that, yeah, if you're thinner, you're healthier. We probably have this ingrained in us and that's okay. But we need to start to take a look is that true? Do I need to be within that normal BMI in order to be healthy? Right? What constitutes healthy? Right? So from there, you can make conscious choices and decisions based on what you know about healthism, that it isn't healthy and it excludes people, not based on their individual choices, but on their societal circumstances, right? There are social circumstances, okay? So just start to see where you see healthism in your life and in your thoughts too, your thoughts and beliefs, right? Because I really had to question some of my thoughts when, go, when learning about this and diving and reading more into it and just those, those societal circumstances that affect our health that we have no control over, right? So just notice where it shows up in your life and notice your thoughts around it. Is it serving you? Is it getting you to your goal, right? Is it helping with your relationship with food? I would say probably not. Okay, my friends, this is all I have for you today. Have a wonderful couple of weeks and I will see you next time. Bye, y'all.